Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to get our lunar lander over to the moon. Now the lunar lander is going to be delivered into lunar orbit without any Kerbals and so they are going to be transferred via the other vehicle, actually the Apollo capsule, to this in lunar orbit. So we'll do two lunar or orbit rendezvous, uh, one uh, to begin with and then the lunar lander will land and then we'll have to do a second lunar orbit rendezvous to get them back to the return vehicle. And so that's how it's going to work and so this is the lunar lander. We've got uh, various scientific experiments on board. We've got goo containers. Now it's not designed to operate without any Kerbals in. So it'll remain attached to the transfer stage until the Kerbals get to it. And uh, that way it'll be under the control of the Saturn instrumentation unit which is good because the Saturn instrumentation unit is very, very powerful and doesn't take much actual electric charge. So that's ideal. I mean, it's got uh, capacity 4,500 tons, so no problems there. So we shouldn't be uh, out of control, but uh, just in case, I put antenna on as well. And we've got this Apollo docking mechanism drogue. So one benefit of sending this over first is that I don't have to unlock all the command module parts that I uh, racked up the funds for. So we only have to use the parts that we already have access to in order to launch this. So that's, that's a positive. Now Delta V wise, we're probably, we're very tight again. Uh, this is heavier than the probe obviously. It doesn't have to get all the way back home to Earth because we have a different vehicle for that, the Apollo capsule. But it does have to do a lot of the mission that the previous uh, probe did, the lander probe. So that is a thing. Solar panels down here, separation rockets, antennae, uh, all that is down here. So yeah, RL-10s, two of them being used. Interesting point about the Shakti rocket is that the engines are all engines that would have been available during the Apollo era. We've got two RL-10s. I think the variants of the RL-10s were available at that time. We've got two J-2s here, and at the bottom here we've got the F-1. Uh, though actually it is configured as an F-1A. Though it's possible they could have uh, which got uh, upgraded the F-1 for this sort of thing. The only question is whether the SRBs would have been available. Uh, the SRBs don't have an unreasonable burn time. Uh, 91 seconds is not unusual. The vacuum ISP may be a bit high for what they had back then. I don't know. Okay, so that is the state of our rocket. And I've named the, named the capsule the lander Dorfel. And that is after a golem in the Discworld series. Uh, because we want our our lander to be very strong and tough and golems are practically indestructible. So, yep, that is the general idea. Let's package this up and see if it works. And of course, only after we see that it works and is delivered to lunar orbit do we have to commit Kerbals to this enterprise. So that is a big plus as far as mission planning is concerned. The main minus is that we have to do this uh, lunar orbit rendezvous twice which, you know, I think any mission planner would wince at, but that is how it's going to be. Okay, so, yep, let's save and launch. Oh wait, a Kerbal snuck in, which reminds me that I need to check on my life support. Let me just, uh, oh, that, that's not going to show anything. Okay, let me go back to the VAB, obviously, to get Bill out, and then uh, let's check on our life support situation. Okay, here we are, and life support says, oop, okay, three days, it looks like, uh, yeah, really about three days for a maximum crew, and that's okay, because remember, the only time there's going to be crewed, sort of poking up out of our building, but the only time there's going to be crewed is when they go down to the surface and then come back up again, so for the longer legs of the journey, they, they won't be in this, so that's going to be a positive all together and so the other capsule of course the Apollo command module is going to have to carry most of the food okay anyway uh, let us make sure Bill is not in here and let's launch okay so here we go relative inclination is 0 0.26 0.27 ish uh, SAS is on throttle is up and uh, planet shine will uh, will brighten things up once we get off the ground I suppose 
All right, so uh, I time warped to the relative inclination minimum, as you can see, so now our uh, clock is going to be off, but I guess that'll be all right. All right, here we go. All right, off it goes. The Dorful on board the Shakti rocket. Let's see, uh, Planet Shine. Well, I guess someday I'll figure that out. Okay, proceeding. Now, of course, we could transfer when their relative inclination is not that close. We could do an off-plane transfer, but those generally take a little bit more delta V, and you know, I expect things to be tight, so I'm not going to tempt fate here. So once again, the lander is built using one kilonewton thrusters, just like the probe was, which is why I couldn't use the lunar module itself. I had to use these capsules because they're lighter. And so that's a bit of a downer, but again, I don't have the lunar ascent or descent engine from the from the tech tree. I have it in the install. I don't have it from the tech tree, so I don't understand that. But hey, we'll make do with what we've got. Now, I do believe that this rocket would have been capable of lifting up the lunar module and delivering it given the lunar module's engines, which are uh, more efficient than the one kilonewton thrusters, that's for sure. Okay, boosters are out. Ooh, booster separation is a bit tight. Hmm. For a crewed mission, that might be a little bit problematic right there. I'm surprised we didn't have a little bit more of a robust decoupling, but all right. Now this F1 is probably burning for longer than the real F1s did. I think they max out at three minutes. This one's burning for longer than that. Not too sure how well the F1 would do burning for longer, but uh, 30 seconds longer I think it is. So, maybe it'd be all right. Okay, fairing set. Still awful close to the body of the rocket. But they are clear. You'll note local, local control, that's because of the Saturn Instrumentation Unit. Remote Tech is still in force, it's just that the Saturn Instrumentation Unit seems to give us local control, which is handy, of course. But uh, I've put the antennae on, so I'm not relying solely on local control or anything like that. Okay, and set. And ignition. So, the two J2s have ignited, and we continue on our way. It's going to be a long burn, but uh, we seem to be going all right. We need part of this J2 stage in order to start us off on our way to the moon, so I'm relying on a little bit of remainder on this stage. We'll see how that goes. Alright, I'll be back with you once we are in orbit. Okay, we're now flattening out and going for orbit. We just passed Apoapsis with about well less than a minute left to burn here. So all is looking well for an orbit around 237 kilometers. Not as much remaining fuel as I would have liked. Okay, I'm cutting it out at 255 by 207. We've got about 300 meters per second left. 
So, yeah, not much. Not much at all. But uh, we'll go with it. Alright, let me do some plotting. Okay, so I've got on a reasonably equatorial pass at uh, 130 kilometers. That's if I get the burns right. And that requires 3,040 around the Earth and then a further inclination adjustment just a little bit out because we're not going to be starting our burn at the node so we're going to have to do it a little bit further out and that's 69 meters per second there it's possible I can just skip that and instead just uh, fix things mid-course this is where the node was before I fixed it and ended up out here but maybe a mid-course change will be a little bit less severe because it'll be further away from the earth of course but we'll see after this burn and when I replot but this is the first burn and so we'll go to that in an hour it's possible and even likely that we are going to need to do the burn in two parts because of the duration of the third stage so that'll also complicate things okay we are approaching we got five minutes to turn this thing around let's see can I shut off this tank not really got a tank in here oh yeah we can let's shut these off for now as I turn on our I've shut off the the payloads tanks as well gotta turn on RCS and let smart ASS turn us towards the node or Oh, are these ports misconfigured? Ah, they're misconfigured. I need to fix that. Okay. Well, uh, looks like our payloads ports are still firing even though uh, these tanks are all off. So, alright, well, it's going to take a little bit of while for those to turn us, but I guess it'll work out. Still, the fuel feeding and how the RCS ports work is a little bit complicated. And by complicated, I mean probably wrong. Okay, I don't know where the, the RCS fuel is being drawn from. It's not being drawn from here. Oh, it's from these pods. It's from the lander cans. Well... Ah, oh boy. That's a problem. Okay, anyway, uh, let's get that off since we seem to be lined up, and let's ignite the settling rockets, and go. Well, that's got us lined up anyway. Ah, oh boy. Okay. I don't suppose we can cross-feed on up, can we? Okay, well we can. Let me keep feeding up until that's all full, otherwise we're going to be short on fuel on ascent from the moon, and that would not be a good thing. This is critical, critical fuel we've got here. Okay, set. And RL-10s. Okay. So that's all set. Let's extend solar panels and our antennae for the longer part of the journey. Very good. The lander's solar panels don't need to be extended. We don't have that going yet. Okay, getting ready to shut down the engine and then go around and then burn again. We've been burning for quite a while on this first burn. And we've covered about half the delta V required, so that's good. Uh, remember when looking at the delta V here that uh, we have locked the tanks up there and I've made sure to lock the lander can tanks now as well. So that is the situation there. Okay, I think we'll go engines shut down now. Okay, and of course we've got all these rockets to help with the relights. So now I'm going to replot and then come back to you with the second burn. By the way, it should be pointed out that I am coming around this way in order to potentially help the possibility of a free return trajectory, though this is not going to be placed on a free return trajectory, and even the crewed mission will probably not be placed on a free return initially. 
they all have to adjust to that, but at least they'll be going in the same direction. Okay, so this is how it is before any mid-course adjustment, and so let's get to it. Okay, here we go, settling down. And reignite. We're all charged up, our energy production is excellent. So we'll have no problems with that side of things. After all, aside from the Saturn instrumentation unit, we don't actually have other controllers. And we also don't have any Kerbals drawing life support and the electricity for that. Okay, here we go. Let's see how far off we are. We've got about half a minute left to burn here. Now, remember, this stage has to not only get the lander into orbit, it will also start out the descent, uh, just like it did with the, with the probe. So, same sort of deal, the lander itself doesn't have enough delta-v to land on its own. It needs to have the fuel from here to start the landing off. And for that, I, I expect about 1,600, maybe a little bit less than that. Let's see how much I need to reserve quickly. Oh, well, we've got the tanks locked, so I can't see. Okay, anyway. Well, we'll make evaluations once we get into orbit around the moon. Take Smart ASS off, get SAS on. Now I'll just go with the maneuver node and then adjust using RCS. Okay, 0.2 meters per second off. Let's see what really happened here. Um, okay, moon periapsis, at least we have one. That's good. That's a good start. Let me, hold on, I think I locked the MMH and then 204 here. Yep. I think these thrusters should be configured. We've used them before on this stage, yeah. You can tell by the ISP that they're configured right. So I don't know if I really want to do a mid-course adjustment and just get the crude capsule to line up with this in a somewhat inclined orbit here. The inclined orbit will allow us access to more stuff, more places to land. That's not necessarily a bad thing. But it's getting pretty inclined as we get closer. Hmm. Okay, that's too close. Let's keep it to 100 kilometers or so. There we go. Okay, let me see if a mid-course plane change is uh, doable. Uh, we will require one of the relights. So, Probably with the mid-course plane change, we'll settle down using RCS. We'll reserve the other set of Ullage rockets for the critical lunar orbit burn. And that seems to me a better way to go. Anyway, uh, we've, got, we've got a substantial amount of MH and N204 in this stage, so I think a mid-course plane change is doable. Okay, so this correction will take 62.6 .6 meters per second, including a ridiculous uh, negative 0.07 prograde burn. But you can see uh, at negative 0.07, we have a 105 kilometer approach. But let's say we zero that out. This is, let's say, zero. That ends up at 470, uh, 457. So yeah, well, we'll, we'll do that uh, 0.07 burn. It changes every time, though. Okay. And probably just turning will probably mess that up. Uh, it's just 10 minutes away here. Unfortunately, our ascending node close to the Earth, but uh, not close enough to our burn point. Oh, our antenna is sort of... I think it's clipping into the tank a little bit there. Hmm. Frankly, with all the spinning Smart ASS has been doing, it's probably settled already. All right, ignite. Okay, bit of a residual there, but okay. Uh, that worked, uh, sort of. Uh, we will use RCS to do the rest. Okay, I'll take that, 90 kilometers. Nice pass. Okay, so let's head on over to the moon. I swear, I'm, I'm coming in in a really awkward way, actually. 
This is definitely not a nominal trajectory by any stretch of the imagination. We'll end up going around the correct way, but really we're supposed to be passing around this way around, not this way around. Weird. We're overburning first. Hmm. Oh well. Okay, here we are in Lunar SOI. Gets easier every time. Partly because we're using larger and larger rockets every time, but uh, here we go. That's an acceptable periapsis, I think. And let's see how much it'll take to get into orbit. I want a nice circular orbit to rendezvous with. Okay, 105 by 122 seems like a good start. Okay, doesn't look like too much of a problem. Let me evaluate my delta V now. Now, I guess I'll wait until I get into orbit. Yeah, probably for the best. There's a lot of tanks to unlock, after all. And then RCS might accidentally draw some stuff. Actually, the way this is, uh, we, we might be in line of sight while doing the burn. That usually isn't the case, passing around this way around the moon. Might actually be beneficial for future missions. Okay, we are getting pretty close now. Alright, I'll just uh, manually take it to the node so that we don't waste too much of the fuel. Remember, we'll be using this fuel to help us stabilize on descent and all that too. So. I really hope that that, uh, that docking mechanism drove right there. The way I've attached it, I hope it's all right. It's weird any way you look at it. Okay, here we go. All the rockets. And burn. We are in orbit around the moon. We are now just tightening our grip on it. Altogether, I think we're going to be delivering more to lunar orbit than a Saturn V did, judging from our vessel mass here. And that's, of course, due to the use of the RL-10s. Uh, the J-2s have less ISP than these RL-10s, and uh, of course the RL-10s are also lighter on altogether, so that's the benefit of them. Downside is, of course, uh, less thrust. The J-2, the third stage of the... Saturn V had 1,033. These combined only have a hundred and almost 150. Not quite there. But then again, the J2 was in use for this part of the thing. Well, there's Earth. So we do have some inclination. We've got 30 degrees, but then again, part of that 30 degrees is probably counted as the because we're uh, in line with the orbit of the moon, which is inclined. So I guess that's fair. I, I think the moon itself considers this zero, but we're actually in line with the orbit of it. Okay, 126 by 109 will be fine. Okay, so now let's unlock all the tanks and see how much delta V we have and evaluate whether it's a good idea to send the Kerbals over or not. Because if we happen to be short, well, no point sending them until we fix that situation, or we could send them with some way of fixing that situation. We'd have to see. By the way, the, uh, for some reason, the tech tree does not give me retractable ladders, so that's why the ladder is still static here. Um, I guess retractable ladders were not invented yet at this time. They they managed to invent rockets to go, go to space, but retractable ladders, not a thing. I don't know. Okay, those are all unlocked. Let's get these unlocked. So we need 4,800 to go down to the moon and come back up, and we've got that. Let's just make sure we have it all in the right places. Uh, 2,200 is necessary to get back up, 2,600 to get down, 
and it looks like we've got that uh, in, in everywhere that we need it. So, okay, so it looks like we're good to send Kerbals over. We will leave this be. And uh, yeah, let me unlock those parts that we need in the VAB and possibly we'll need to take a look at the tech tree to see if there's any other Apollo parts I need to grab. Okay, so let's unlock some parts here. Apollo command module. Let's do that. Oh, that's pretty cheap after you unlock it. It costs a lot to develop it, I suppose. Not very expensive. Again, we, we're not going to use the lunar module here. I think everything else here is unnecessary. Uh, lunar descent portion, unnecessary. Uh, service module of RCS. I don't know if I'm going to use that. I could use uh, just a procedural tank. Well, heck, uh, let's let's unlock it, just uh, just in case I decide to use it. Don't see anything else here. I'm not gonna use the Saturn fuel tanks. Those I can definitely. I mean, I'm using my own rocket after all. We've got the service propulsion system already, but we're not. I don't know if I'm gonna use that. Probably I'm just going to use the RL-10s. I have no idea why we wouldn't use the RL-10s. Much more efficient than using the service propulsion system, though the service propulsion system would be much more reliable on restart, but of course this is Kerbal, so I don't have to worry about that. We've already got the J2s. Could use the Aerospike, but no, let's not do that. Let's keep it to technology of the time. Still not seeing anything that I would need there okay command module RCS back I suppose we need that just in case they don't have it built in I think they have it built in though okay well uh, oh, the forward heat shield is here there's command module heat shield okay so that'll be super important and launch escape assembly, I guess we'll use that instead of my preferred way of doing things. Service module docking light, why not? Parachutes, very important. Already our budget is getting its hit. Okay, uh, so it seems like I'm missing the other portion of the docking system. Yeah, I don't think it'll be under science. Nope. Okay, so let's go to the tech tree and grab that. Okay, where are you, docking system? There it is. Apollo docking mechanism probe. So we'll unlock this. And we will research that part in particular. This is another Saturn instrumentation unit, but this is for a Saturn V, which will give us 20,000 tons. Uh, of course, our our current rocket is limited to 1,500 tons, and I, I think it'll be all right. There's no, I guess I'll unlock uh, these uh, service module RCS quads. Oh, there's the there's the retractable ladders. Well, we don't need it now. I put the other ladder on, and I don't want to spend 160 science for ladders. Can you imagine 160 science just for ladders? Amazing. Ooh, inflatable airbags. Okay, I think that about does it. Alright, so we're all set. So, next time, we will have a crewed vehicle, an Apollo capsule, and we will attempt to send it to the moon and rendezvous with our lander. The good thing about this is, if the capsule cannot rendezvous with the lander, it can still return so we don't have to worry about it getting stranded. Okay, so uh, with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.